Tourism around the world is important, but tourism is not always the best for everyone. If you didn't know, tourism actually makes up a substantial amount, as in more than 20% of at least seven countries around the world. I know, I thought the number would be higher, but ironically, there's a lot of things that makes an economy go. So in that regard though, if you think about it, tourism is actually kind of everywhere. There are tourists for almost every country around the world, with maybe a small exception there of North Korea. Now, I know, tourists are not always viewed as the best thing in the world. Yes, they bring dollars to your local economy, and yes, they can ultimately drive some economic benefits and growth in your economy, but they often have a pretty heavy impact on the environment and those that live there when they're present. So that got me thinking, is tourism, with all of its faults, flaws, and benefits, a good thing for space settlement? Let's find out. First, a little bit of background about myself. I grew up in a tourist town in the middle of America, and that led me to see some really interesting things and experience some less than savory people in life. This view has kind of skewed my perception of what tourism really is, but I also think gives me a very weird level of experience to talk about why tourism might actually be good for space settlement, at least here in the near term. So first, let's dive into some of the pros and cons of tourism at large. Uh, some of the pros in general are economic drivers, right? Think about places in the Caribbean that benefit tremendously from cruise ship traffic and just people flying into their country and spending dollars in their economy on their services and people. Leads me to a con though, which can be over or hyper specialization in tourist centric activities and economic drivers only for tourism centric benefits. This gets a little tricky though, because that negativity of economic output regarding how and many people that economic output goes to is less than stellar and can ultimately drive some level of inequality between the touristy areas and the non-touristy areas. However, tourism as a whole though is a more or less about an economic redistribution of wealth between wealthy areas that can afford to travel and poor areas that need the money but are beautiful to look at. Terrible, right? Another pro of tourism is bringing people to places they otherwise wouldn't normally visit or normally live. Now, why is this a good thing? Well, I would argue as somebody who hasn't traveled near enough that tourism is an opportunity for me to experience different places in the world that I just either wouldn't live or go normally outside of a tourism experience. That, however, also provides to me this level of awareness of others and their culture in the world that I just otherwise wouldn't have. Con though, is I may not be as respectful to these areas as I should be if I was living there. <laughs> Thus, I may be inadvertently trafficking either parasites or bugs or literally littering where I'm going and not even know it. Look at just any cruise ship that says everything you need to know. Now, if we are to extrapolate this to space settlement, how does space tourism then benefit space settlement as a cause? Interestingly enough, it's really about the money. If you look at companies like Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic, they're selling tickets to literally just barely peek up into space and get the birth effect by seeing the curvature of the Earth, which frankly, ah, yeah, I would love to do that. I also don't have a cool $25 million laying around to buy a ticket. However, if I'm a space company and I can sell a ticket for $25 million and I'll launch, let's be honest, don't cost me $25 million and I'm launching six of those people at the same time, you know where the money's going, R&D. And it will allow me then to expand and grow and further research and development that otherwise just wouldn't be funded and if done correctly can build out the pillars of space settlement which are space medicine space biospheres and space law via this tourism funding now agreeably that does take a market of millionaires or billionaires to afford but 
those people exist. Specifically though, I do wanna highlight in on Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic. To date, they have sold roughly each $100 million in tickets. Now, the vehicles they built, well, let's be honest, cost more than $100 million to develop over the course of their life, but the sheer fact that so far, and these are the numbers I was able to find, which, side note, I think are out of date, is very impressive given their very limited reach. Where this gets kind of interesting is when we begin to extrapolate the concept of space tourism a little further into the near term. Imagine companies like SpaceX or a company partnering with SpaceX to offer launch services or, better yet, rides to space to a space station like Orbital Reef or anything that VAST is building. And suddenly now you can start to see a bit of a tourist economy building here in low Earth orbit. Extrapolate a little further, a little longer in time frames. And now you're starting to look at the moon and landing people on the moon within five to 10 to 15 years, depending on who you talk to. And those tickets surely would cost more than 25 million to go see the Earth from space, right? Now you're starting to see the benefit of space tourism. It's really an economic driver. And specifically, it's an economic, not even wealth redistribution, but more so an economic research and development funds distribution, which is a very interesting way to look at tourism in general. I don't know of any other country on Earth. If there is one, let me know in the comments. But I don't know of any other country on Earth that uses their tourism funds for research and development with regards to space. Let me know I'm wrong. And this is just the tip, the very tiniest tip of the iceberg when it comes to space tourism and the good that it can do. However, we as people who are pro space settlement need to keep in mind that there are some negative consequences to tourism in space. Specifically, it is the, it sounds weird, but it is the ecological impact of space tourism. And more specifically to that, it is building out habitats with the sole purpose of only tourism in space. A lot of the plans regarding space tourism and more so regarding space settlement do include wide swaths of science wings and exploration wings and to some degree, space tourism and tourist specific or more so catered wings of the settlement. These plans though are still very much in their infancy and unfortunately rely very heavily on the funding thereof to determine what they ultimately become. So in my mind, space tourism can play a huge component in this if you have any amount of consistent people showing up who can pay those bills. Space tourism can potentially create a situation that space settlement becomes self-funding far sooner than the raw resources that could be returned to Earth would require. So if you can't tell, I'm pretty optimistic actually about space tourism and its positive impacts on space settlement. Now I know the road will be long and tried and it will not be smooth and there will be problems. And if I know anything about tourists, they don't like bumps in the road. They like a nice smooth journey. And it's gonna be hard to provide that here in the early days. But there are some that are of interest, such as the people who tour this to Alaska and do the overland hikes and go to these really remote places. Ah, they're the people we're looking for to be a tourist on a space station, to be a tourist on a moon base or on a moon space station. These are the people we're looking for. And I believe in my heart of hearts that there are many out there with enough money and enough interest to fund something truly amazing. But it's gonna take a little bit to figure out what that something truly amazing is. And as something though truly amazing, it aligns very well with one of the two irrefutable reasons to settle space, which is the hot tub hypothesis, AKA you do things cause they're cool and then you do things because you have to. And this one squarely fits in the former. It's just really cool. And that's what tourism, frankly, is all about. Also relaxing, but psh, who has time for that? It's way more exciting to go do something cool. So if taking a ride to space for a few hundred million dollars or a few million dollars or even a few hundred thousand or better yet, a few 
$2,000. Sounds like something that's interesting to you. Please like, comment, subscribe, and let me know, where would you want to go as a tourist, as a space tourist, here in the next five to ten years, assuming we could? I would love to hear your comments down below. And also, if you enjoyed this kind of video, space settlement centric, very, very heavy on that, you might like these videos as well. All space settlement, all the time around here. So, hope to see you there. Otherwise, you keep dreaming about going beyond Earth orbit.